President Trump's own FBI director shoots down the president's claim about being wiretapped by President Obama. Also, Comey confirms for the first time the FBI is investigating possible links between the Trump campaign and Russia. We have the fallout. Also breaking new rules about the electronic devices being banned on board certain flights. NBC News exclusive, a woman who made a daring leap caught on camera, jumping from a moving car trunk to escape her alleged kidnapper, telling her harrowing story. Super Bowl stunner as the FBI hunts down Tom Brady's missing jersey and finds a second one that was also missing. Tonight, who's being blamed? And Memorial Mystery, our Monday inspiring America. Nightly News begins right now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening. The head of the FBI dropped two bombshells over Capitol Hill today, both, however, landing at the White House doorstep. James Comey, in public testimony, joined the growing chorus of intelligence officials and lawmakers rejecting President Trump's tweeted claims of being wiretapped by President Obama before the election. I have no information that supports those tweets, and we have looked carefully inside the FBI. The Department of Justice has asked me to share with you that the answer is the same for the Department of Justice and all its components. Then there was this, that the Trump campaign has been under an FBI investigation since last summer in connection with Russian meddling in the election. The FBI, as part of our counterintelligence mission, is investigating the Russian government's efforts to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that includes investigating the nature of any links between individuals associated with the Trump campaign and the Russian government, and whether there was any coordination between the campaign and Russia's efforts. Tonight, the White House is clinging to the discredited wiretap claim as it works to change the narrative on the Russian investigation. A historic day in Washington that also includes the first day of hearings for Supreme Court nominee Neil Gorsuch. We have it all covered, starting with NBC's Andrea Mitchell. Today, James Comey not only saying there's no evidence to back the president's tweet, claiming President Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower, but also saying it's not even possible. So President Obama could not unilaterally order a wiretap of anyone? No president could. As for Mr. Trump's tweet that this is McCarthyism by the president and presumably the FBI. Were you engaged in McCarthyism, Director Comey? Try very hard not to engage in any isms of any kind, including, <laughs> including McCarthyism. Our British allies have called the president's suggestion that they wiretapped him for Obama nonsense and utterly ridiculous. Would you agree? Yes, sir. And tonight, the FBI revealing they're investigating possible coordination between the president's campaign and Russia's hacking of Democrats, a lengthy probe that could lead all the way to the White House. Russia's motive? Putin hated Secretary Clinton so much that, that the flip side of that coin was he had a clear preference for the person running against the person he hated so much. Comey's appearance, along with NSA Director Admiral Mike Rogers, a tale of two hearings. For Democrats, it was all about Russia and the possible Trump campaign connection. This was, in part, an inside job from U.S. persons, willing American accomplishments, accomplices, or terribly naive ones, or probably both, who helped the Russians attack our country and our democracy. While Republicans avoiding the topic of Russia, instead going after the leaks of classified information, allegedly from current and former intelligence officials, specifically about fired National Security Advisor Mike Flynn and the Russian ambassador. In theory, how would reporters know a U.S. citizen made a telephone call to an agent of foreign power? Somebody told them who shouldn't have told them. And Republicans underscoring that the Russian hacking did not change the vote count. Do you have any evidence that Russia cyber actors changed vote tallies in the state of Michigan? <clears throat> no, I do not. But I would highlight we're in foreign intelligence organization, not a domestic intelligence organization. Still, the White House tweeting out that exchange, sparking a real-time fact check from Democrats. It says the NSA and FBI tell Congress that Russia did not influence electoral the electoral process, is that accurate? We've offered no opinion, have no view, have no information on potential impact because it's never something that we looked at. But after Comey's rebukes, when the White House was asked if the president would apologize to President Obama. No, we're, 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 we started a hearing. Um, it's still ongoing. There's a lot of things that aren't being covered 
in, in this hearing. Lawmakers also asking why the FBI didn't do more to blow the whistle on Russia's hacking. And Comey saying if he had to do it all over again, he would have walked over to the DNC himself and banged on the door. Lester. Andrea Mitchell starting us off. Thanks. And now that the FBI confirms it is looking into possible links between Russia and Trump associates, the White House today sought to distance itself from some former senior advisors. For more on the possible Russian connection that investigators may be looking into, we turn to NBC News White House correspondent Hallie Jackson. But uh, maybe someday. The questions President Trump tried to shake for months aren't going anywhere. I have nothing to do with Russia. To the best of my knowledge, no person that I deal with does. Director James Comey is now confirming an FBI inquiry into Trump aides' links to the Kremlin started last July, months before the election. That's when headlines swirled surrounding people like Paul Manafort, who had business ties to pro Russian Ukrainians. And again, today, is denying any involvement with the Russians. Tonight, the White House is working to minimize his role. Paul Manafort, who played a very limited role for a very limited amount of time. But for six months, roughly a third of the campaign, Manafort served as de facto campaign manager. I think they may be trying to protect themselves from what they don't know about Paul Manafort or Mike Flynn or others who were around the campaign but are now known to have had contacts with Russians. The administration has long dismissed Carter Page, who visited Moscow during the campaign, as just a bit player. And today, Roger Stone, a notorious GOP operative, demanded his chance to respond to what he calls smears at the hearing. He cut ties with Team Trump in 2015 but raised questions with his tweet last summer, seeming to to predict a WikiLeaks hack aimed at the Clinton campaign. I have a back channel uh, communications with WikiLeaks. To Democrats, it adds up to this argument, too many connections to be coincidence. To Republicans, it's a witch hunt, with the White House pointing to statements from former Obama administration officials. But at the time, I, we had no evidence of, of, of such collusion. It could be years before the investigation's complete. Until then, its cloud hangs over the Trump administration, the shadow of Russia looming. Hallie Jackson, NBC News, Washington. All of this brings us to the subject of President Trump's credibility, which is one of the most important things a president has, especially when a national crisis arises and the country turns to its commander-in-chief. Now, after a string of unproven claims, will this president struggle to keep the trust of the American public? Here's NBC's Peter Alexander. Tonight, for a president who's often loose with the facts, a moment of truth after being publicly rebuked by the FBI director for his latest unfounded claim. In Mr. Trump's insurgent campaign fueled by promises, this one likely got lost. In this journey, I will never lie to you. I will never tell you something I do not believe. But as president, those beliefs threaten to undermine his credibility on issues big and small. A White House claim about record crowd size consuming his first day in office. The field was, it looked like a million, a million and a half people. An assessment photographs disproved. Or this head-scratching comment last month. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden. Who would believe this? Sweden. That an apparent reference to a terror attack, but there wasn't one. Presidents even demanded an investigation based on his unsubstantiated charge that millions of people voted illegally. <laughs> then there's this false claim about his victory. I guess it was the biggest electoral college win since Ronald Reagan. But that's just not true, as NBC News pointed out in real time. Why should Americans trust well, you no, I was when told, you're I was misrepresenting given information? information? I, was, I was just given. We had a very, very big margin. It's nothing new. Mr. Trump's political career was launched on the back of his birther claim against President Obama. You are not allowed to be a president if you're not born in this country. He may not have been born in this country. What's the cumulative effect? When people begin to get skeptical about what a president tells us, it begins to lead to a situation where he is less powerful. Also new tonight, the president's daughter, Ivanka Trump, is joining her father's team here at the White House. A source familiar with Ivanka's plans tells me she will not have an official title or take any salary, but she will be moving into an office just above her father's. Lester. Peter Alexander at the White House. Thanks, Peter. And for some perspective on where this leaves us, I'm joined now by Tom Brokaw. Tom, you've covered every president since Johnson. Today we got confirmation this time from the FBI director that the president is pushing a false story and that his campaign has been under investigation now since July. These are not policy red-blue issues, but how do they color 
everything this administration does and says going forward. you got to remember, this administration is only two months old. It's got some very important legislation in the works, and yet everyone is focused on whether the president is telling the truth. First of all, about the wiretapping, which everyone says it's not true, and then about any connection they may have with the Russians. We don't know that yet. Now, people are beginning to murmur Watergate. It's a little too early to do that. That took two years. It was built brick by brick. But in fact, there are a lot of outstanding questions here, Lester, not just about the integrity of the election, but the integrity of the president of the United States who continues to govern by tweet, which a lot of people find that very hard to believe. But that's the age in which we now live. And we'll see how this plays out. But it's not going to go away anytime soon. Tom Brokaw, appreciate your perspective. Thank you. Now, the other major event today on Capitol Hill. The Senate began confirmation hearings for Neil Gorsuch, President Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court. But Democrats are still seething after the GOP refused to hold hearings for former President Obama's nominee last year. NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams has more. I love you so much. With a hug and a kiss from his wife for good luck, the hearing for Neil Gorsuch comes just over a year since President Obama nominated federal judge Merrick Garland to fill the vacancy left by the death of Antonin Scalia. Garland never even got a hearing, leaving the seat open for President Trump to fill. I am deeply disappointed that it's under these circumstances that we begin our hearings. Democrats said Gorsuch must stand up for judges, given Donald Trump's stinging tweets about the courts. His demeaning and disparaging comments about the judiciary have shaken the foundations of respect for judicial rulings. Judge Gorsuch vowed to be independent, going where the law takes him. A judge who likes every outcome he reaches is probably a pretty bad judge, stretching for policy results he prefers rather than those the law compels. Some scholars say Gorsuch could turn out to be further to the right than Justice Scalia was on issues like the rights of criminal defendants. I don't think you can expect to get the exact same kind of ideology from Neil Gorsuch, but Republicans and conservatives are going to be very happy with him. If confirmed, he could be on the court by early April, perhaps in time to decide whether President Trump's executive order on immigration is constitutional. Pete Williams, NBC News, at the Supreme Court. Tonight, NBC News has learned the government is about to announce new restrictions on electronic devices banned on board certain overseas flights into the U.S. NBC's Miguel Almaguer is in our Los Angeles newsroom with late details. Miguel, what can you tell us about this? Lester, good evening. One federal official tells NBC News the new temporary electronic restrictions is based on threat intelligence. Tomorrow, Homeland Security will officially announce the changes for passengers flying into the U.S. from overseas on certain flights. The temporary rules will restrict some devices to checked bags. In a now deleted tweet, Jordanian Airlines warned passengers would not be able to carry on laptops, tablets, cameras and other electronics, but cell phones and medical devices would be exempt. U.S. officials say laptops have long been a source of concern, but declined to be specific about the nature of the threat or how long the restrictions would be in effect. We're told they would not apply to U.S. airlines, only foreign carriers operating flights from certain countries directly to the U.S. Lester. Miguel Almaguer, thank you. Still ahead, speaking out, the kidnapping victim caught on camera jumping from the trunk of a moving car talks exclusively to NBC News about her harrowing ordeal. How something she saw on social media helped her daring escape. Also, the big new twist in the mystery over Tom Brady's stolen Super Bowl jersey. Stay with us. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do.